Oh, well, this video is going to take a little bit longer than I expected. Okay, now that we have audio, so you can actually hear me, uh, I have it built. It's all ready to go. So I already got a little bit of dust from static cling on here, but uh, that's okay. Uh, there's a little software that you need to install to get everything working, like the, the little OLED and RGB and all that. And the nice thing about having a good case like this one is it has full-size HDMI, so you don't need these annoying adapters from micro HDMI on the Pi. So we can junk that and just plug in this display right to it. Uh, and then I'll plug in my keyboard. And uh, I need power, so let me grab power. And it just uses the Raspberry Pi's USB-C power input. So you can just do the same thing here, USB-C. Plug it in and we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna have to use Wi-Fi because I don't have ethernet over here in this part of the studio. Is it on? Do we have power? What's going on here? Do I have to press the power button? No, I'm not getting any power. But I don't even see a light, which makes it feel like I'm not getting power in here, but there's the outlet definitely has power. And I can guarantee that everything is plugged in Nothing is shorting up here on the GPIO pins. Okay, well, I uh, took off the PIP and the power connector just to see you know, what was going on. I took off the FFC to here because maybe there's a problem on the hat or maybe on the power or maybe on this little jumpery thing or something, I don't know. And I plug it in and we get power, so Something is either wrong with one of these, or I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna unpower it, take it all apart, and see what happens here. I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm not gonna screw anything in yet, but all I've done is plug in the FFC and the little four pin header that says five volt and ground. So if this doesn't power up, we know something's wrong on one of these boards. And that powers up, so I don't know what's going on here, but we'll put the screws back in and, and see if that works. In theory, maybe there's a, oh shoot, one of the screws fell in. There it goes. Uh, in theory, maybe this header was not plugged in correctly or something was funny with one of these power wires, I don't know. Um, but if it works reliably after this, I'm guessing it was just some little thing like that. Uh, we'll see, before I put on the side case, I'll do this one more time. Okay, we're getting power. So back on the side piece goes. Now, this time, maybe things will just work, unless it was the HDMI cable that was causing a problem. Uh, that could be, but uh, hopefully not. Put you in. Okay, we have power. Everything is working this time. Plug that in. Let's get this keyboard turned on. And uh, there's, there's instructions here that tell me what to do next. Uh, it should, it's trying USB. It should be trying NVMe at some point, I hope. Otherwise, I'll have to change the firmware on it. Browse to pyronman5.rtfd.io to get started. Okay, so we're gonna do that once this thing boots up. Uh, so apparently I didn't have the uh, firmware on here set correctly, so I'm going to flash uh, firmware that says boot from NVMe first, and then USB, and then microSD. So let's see if that works. We'll see if it flashes the bootloader. Mm. 
that's a little funny, but that worked. Okay, turn it off again. And it looks like it's a push-push, so you got to push it in to pull it out. It's a little different, but uh, I guess it's nice if it, since it's kind of recessed in there. It lets you grab the card a little bit easier. But now that we did that, now let's see if it boots up off of the NVMe. No. For some reason, it is not seeing the NVMe drive. I don't see any LEDs on it. Oh, there are some LEDs. It looks like it's not getting power for some reason. The board is definitely plugged in there. Hold for a second. It's said to have the black part up, but I'm wondering if this part needs to be down. If the gold context should be up. That could be our problem. I mean, we'll see. I'm not going to put all the covers back on yet, because I just want to see if this helps. Whoa! I'm still not seeing the LEDs on the uh, NVMe PIP board. So I don't think we're going to get a successful NVMe boot on here. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I Oh, hey, there we go. Well. So here's what I did. I took this cable out and I put in the new cable. I don't see anything wrong with it, but these cables are pretty delicate. The best cables for these that I've seen are from pine boards. This one is so thin, it's like there's one layer thick of polyamide or maybe two layers. It could also be that it was seated incorrectly in one of these two slots, I'm not sure. But now that it's booting, I can put everything back together. And uh, do I want to risk doing that <laughs> while it's running? I think so. I think that's fun. That makes it more exciting. Okay, PyOS is booted up. Let's get this, uh, let's get the RGBs all RGBing. See what the damage is when you install their little software package that runs in the background to do all the fancy controls on here. Don't fall across the 5 volt leads on the GPIO, please. That's always exciting when you do that. That's when your $60 Raspberry Pi turns into a $0 Raspberry Pi. So I'm glad that they include another cable. If you need an extra one, Pineboard sells them. I don't know if Sunfounder sells extra cables, um, but I, I like to have five or six of these on, on hand because I have had a couple break. It's the first time I've had one break the first time I used it though. So I don't know. I don't know why that is. I, like I said, I don't see anything that would even look flaky about this one, uh, but it could also be that it was just not perfectly seated in the connector, even though I reseated it too. Uh, but we'll get this thing updated and see what happens. Browse to that to get started. Let's do that. I have upgraded everything on here, and uh, there's the Raspberry Pi welcome page. Pyronman5.rtfd.io. Edit the EEPROM. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just following their commands that they give. It wants me to install Python. So it looks like it's going to be running some sort of little Python script in the background. Okay, we're going to grab this code. Now, I have not looked directly at their code and everything, but I'm guessing that it's good, maybe. We'll see. Some of these things, like when you run an OLED screen or have fan control, it has to run something in the background to do that. Hopefully it doesn't use more than like 1% to 3% CPU, but uh, we'll see if it does. That's one downside to having an advanced case like this. You end up with some extra things on it that you may or may not need. Oh, the fans just, oh, here we go. Things are happening. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring, bring you in a little bit closer on here so you can see what's going on. And I have to do it backwards because I, uh, okay, wow. Sorry about that. We're gonna be moving around a bit here. And now it's too low. Okay, let's try this all, okay, wow. Yeah, we're going to get there. This is second channel. Things always go crazy here. Okay. Is that better? No, we're still pretty low. I'm going to move this light in a little bit and over a little bit and in a little bit and over a little bit and in. Okay. So you can see that it's uh, in person. You don't see this flicker. See the flicker there? That's only visible on the camera because I'm using a 60th of a second, I think, is the shutter speed. And uh, yeah, so don't worry so much about that flicker. 
Uh, but it looks like the thing is working now, and to get everything to work, we need to restart. So I'll go ahead and reboot. It'll do that. And I'm tripping over my power cords. I need a better... This is like my, my second-hand studio. Wow, everything... Oh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is slightly skewed. Let me try to fix this camera so you can actually see things better. Uh, okay. This is, uh, this is my cheap little stand thing. That's why I have to like aim it up, tighten it, and then hope that it lands in the right spot, which is... Okay, now it's going down more. This is not, not very fun. Okay, aim it up, and okay, that, that's pretty good. So now you can see what it's doing. There's some green LEDs, very fancy. Okay, it's booting up, and there's the screen, and the fans turn off because it's cool enough. I think from watching other people's videos on this, it doesn't look like the fans actually run that much, but they stay, the LEDs on this board stay lit up. See, you can see those LEDs. Here, I'll hold it down on the top. So the lighting is still nice enough. Um, let, me, let me move this here. I'm going to turn off this big light here so you can see the effect a little bit better. Whoa, see? Fancy. Oh, well, now let me turn up the... And I'm changing all my settings now. So there's that. And I will, I will work on changing some settings here and we can see what we can see. Localhost 34001, I think it was. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I do see fan. I see the temperature. Fan state is off. Storage size, memory, network, processor. That's a little easier to see. Let, let me zoom out so you can actually see these things which is gonna cause me to reposition the camera, which is going to be annoying, but oh well. There, that's good enough. You, you can, you can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, uh, temperature unit, Fahrenheit or Celsius fan mode, cool. You can set it to balanced, quiet, or always on. Let's see what always on does. Well, it turns on the fans, that's, uh, that's good. Okay. RGB, you can disable it. That's good. Set an RGB color, set brightness. Let's see how bright it can get. That's not that much brighter. Uh, solid, let's do that to just to see how bright it gets. And you can dim it down. That's, eh, it is pretty dim, okay. So it, it, does, it does get uh, bright and dark. We can do, let's do a rainbow. Whoa, and save. Okay, speeds, you can change the speed of it. So that's kind of fun, but the fans, so the fans are always off. When the fans are off, they don't have their RGB on, but do they change color with the rest? It looks like the fans just stay red at all times. So let me set this to none. Oh no, the fans do change. I have RGB set to none. Let me just turn them off. So if you turn RGB off, the fans are still on. And they do a weird blinky thing when they're going through the rotation with the white cycle. I don't know if that's a power issue or what, but it looks like the RGB controls this board's RGB, but not the fan RGB because there's just two wires, so there's no RGB control for those fans. So that's slightly annoying because, it, like, let's say I wanted to do just red. Turn on RGB, solid, save. So that's blue. So if I just wanted blue, these fans back here are not blue. So the fans are not integrated to the rest of the RGB control. Although now they're solid red. Why are they, why did they stop at solid red? <laughs> I don't understand these fans. Okay, now they're doing things again. Yeah, I, I don't understand how the fans are supposed to interact, but there's only two wires, so. Sometimes you get what you get. Um, but that is, it's another thing where it's like 80 bucks and there's no way to find a way to have fans that don't do that because that kind of destroys the whole full RGB control. It'd be cool if there were either fans that did it or they just chose fans that don't do it at all. Like you could put in some Noctua fans or something else that just doesn't do that. Um, 
but in general, if I go back to cool and save it, those fans are off, so this RGB is actually functional. So, I don't know. And I'll just let it be rainbow. Fun. Fun times. Okay, now I'm going to close this. So those are all the settings we get. Um, and then there's history. Uh, I don't see any history in here, though. Oh, if I check it. Okay, so that, that's kind of nice. I mean, it's a dashboard. It's a, you can run different dashboards. I don't know how this one's doing. Let's check. Let's check really quick uh, in here if we do htop and see how much processor time this thing is using. It's using a few percent. If I close Chromium so it's not rendering all this, let's see how that helps. If it's just running in the background, it's still using 1 to 2 percent, so that's not too bad. Honestly, that's, that's better than a lot of the utilities that I've seen from vendors when they give this stuff out. So whoever's doing it did a good enough job that they're not like killing your processor just running RGB and OLED control. I hate it when that happens. So this is, whoever did the software on this, give yourself a pat on the back. That's, uh, that's not too bad to use 2% CPU doing this. But like I said, for me, would I buy this for 80 bucks? I don't, I don't think so personally, but I don't fault anybody for buying it because it does have a lot of, a lot of cool little bits to it. Uh, there you have it. That's my review of the Pimeroni Pyronman 5. And yes, they sent it to me, so I marked this as a sponsored video. And no, I would not buy one for myself, but I'm not not recommending it. It's, it's good for what it is. If you want an expensive Pi 5 case that has all the bells and whistles, there it is. I, I did have a couple things that I didn't like particularly. One is the, uh, the board on the back. It's a little bit wobbly. For having all the screws inside, you'd think that this, uh, this, these cables would not wobble, but there's a little bit of wobble to these parts. The Pi does not move at all, so I think it's just the flex on the board inside there. The power button's fine. Uh, when it's installed, it's a little bit mushier than it felt when I hadn't installed it yet, but it's fine. Uh, I would like this to wrap around. Having a wrap-around acrylic piece would be really nice. Uh, that would give the premium finish vibe. I don't know. And the other thing is on this side, there's just all these exposed screws. I think when you're paying that much for a case, it's nice to not have a bunch of exposed screws on the side. I don't know how they can engineer around that, but it would be cool to have a case, maybe have studs that are welded inside. But again, that's one of the little things, like when you're paying 80 bucks for a case, if you get a PC case, you're going to have welded studs and you don't see anything besides a little dot on the back where those welds are. So... I don't know. There, there's, there are some things they can improve here uh, for, for the Pyron Man 6, uh, but overall it's a, it's a decent case. The most RGB in a case so far, this wins that by a mile.